The first half of this video will go through the exact sentences you need to get top marks on questions regarding the mechanisms of inspiration and expiration. The second half of the video will go a bit more in depth explaining how the lungs fill and empty with air. When we breathe in, inspiration, the diaphragm contracts and flattens. The intercostal muscles contract and pull the ribs upwards and outwards. The volume of the thoracic cavity increases and the pressure inside the lungs decreases. The atmospheric pressure is higher than the pressure in the lungs. Air rushes into the lungs down a pressure gradient. When we breathe out, expiration, the diaphragm relaxes and domes upwards. The intercostal muscles relax and pulls the ribs downwards and inwards. The volume of the thoracic cavity decreases and the pressure inside the lungs increases. The air pressure inside the lungs is higher than the atmospheric pressure. Air rushes out of the lungs down a pressure gradient. Remember, when we breathe in, all the muscles just mentioned contract. When we breathe out, all the muscles mentioned relax. Now on to the next half of the video, looking at this in more detail. You won't need the following information to answer exam questions, but if you understand the process more, then you should be able to remember how the process works. Everything I mention will be simplified, and there won't be too much terminology. Pressure measures the collective force when particles collide on the walls of a container. If you have the same number of particles and the temperature is constant, then if we increase the volume, the pressure decreases. The collective outward force felt on the walls of the container is less. If we shrink the container and reduce the volume, the pressure goes up as the collective force felt on the container increases. The atmosphere is constantly applying pressure on our bodies, and given a chance, the atmosphere will enter our lungs. You can open your mouth, however, and notice that air doesn't rush in and inflate your lungs. This is because the pressure inside the lungs is equal to the atmospheric pressure, so the body needs to do more than just open the mouth. The lungs are surrounded by a membrane folded over itself to make a space filled with fluid. It is connected to the lungs and the thoracic walls. Fun fact, is that the pressure in that space is less than atmospheric pressure, so the lungs are always a bit inflated. If you get a puncture in the cavity, Ow. it can cause the lung to collapse. This is because the lungs have elastic walls that want to collapse and cause the lungs to reduce in volume, combined with the increase in pressure surrounding the lungs. The amount of fluid in that space is always kept the same, so if the volume changes, the pressure changes. When the intercostal muscles contract and pull the ribs up and out, it pulls the outer layer of the membrane with it, increasing the volume of the space surrounding the lungs and therefore decreasing the pressure. The membrane that is touching the lungs is pulled outwards and so are the lungs. So the lung volume increases and the pressure decreases so air rushes in. The diaphragm itself contracting also increases the thoracic cavity volume causing the same effect. When we exhale, the muscles involved relax, and because the rib cage can recoil back and the elasticity of the lungs wanting to pinch back inwards, it decreases the volume of the lungs. This combined with the diaphragm doming upwards will cause the thoracic cavity volume to decrease. This forces air out of the lungs and into the atmosphere because the pressure is higher in the lungs compared to the atmosphere. Here is a pomelo fruit, and they kind of look like lungs. If we squeeze the fruit, the volume decreases and the pressure increases, causing the juice to be forced out. In the next lesson, we will look at the bell jar model.